the first YouTube soap video that I ever posted was a corner pour using clays as natural colorants and I finished that uh, soap with some circular striping to make the pattern a little more complicated. Today I'm making a, another corner pour with just radial stripes, none of the cross stripes and I'm also using some brighter mica colors. Here's the recipe I'm going to be using calculated on soapcalc.net. It uses some high oleic canola oil, coconut oil, uh, pig lard, olive oil, and a little bit of beef tallow. Um, that should make a nice textured soap which should be pretty uh, slow moving which is good if you're going to make a complicated pattern. Um, I'm also putting in some sodium lactate to harden it a bit as well as some sugar to improve the uh, bubbliness of it. And I'm using Nature's Garden's Freesia fragrance oil which is not only a very good smelling oil but it also doesn't seem to accelerate or discolor a soap in any way. Um, I'm using rainbow colors without red and I'm substituting white for the red. We teach a course here that uh, called Plants in Society where one of the lab projects is to have the students make soap from plant-based oils and I always let them choose their own colors and this was a combination a group of them chose last semester that I thought was quite pretty. Um, it really doesn't look rainbowy at all without the red but it's a nice combination of colors and I think that will look good in a standard corner pour soap. I have my oils with the um, fragrance oil in them, a little over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. My lye water, which already has the sugar and the sodium lactate in it, is also just above 100 Fahrenheit. So I'm ready to blend these. And as usual, I have my stick blender just in a pitcher of hot water to rinse it and to give it enough weight that it won't fall over. Of course, for any slow moving soap where you need to make a pattern, I don't want really to blend this all the way to trace. I want to go just to um, good emulsion, but that's all. hand whisk those and then they'll almost certainly need some stick blending also. I have the colorants uh, pre-hydrated with a little bit of water on the bottom, about 12 milliliters in each. So the main reason for the hand whisking before the stick blending is to uh, loosen those up from the bottom and stir them into the batter. Buttercup yellow that I'm using morphs. Um, I've talked about this in other videos. It morphs when it uh, is exposed to high pH, so it'll turn kind of a bright orange here in just a minute. I can see it changing right now, but then it'll go back to being uh, pale yellow when the soap is finished. Kind of a, a fun effect to watch. Purple. 
I should be able to blend them without having to wash the stick blender in between. Because as you move each color along, that little bit of contamination won't matter. Nicely emulsified, but not really at all a trace yet. I think the order I'll do these in is white, orange, blue, yellow, purple, green. That'll give nice contrast. So here's my mold. It is my 15 bar wooden mold um, made by Papa's Woodcrafts, available on Etsy. Uh, I've lined it with freezer paper and I'm going to pour into this corner so I'll use the handle of a wooden spoon to prop that corner up a bit so the soap will run across. Starting with white, orange, blue, yellow and you can see this yellow has morphed to be just about the same shade of orange as the orange. Purple. Green. batter's sinking down or blending too much with the previous color, it helps to actually run it down the side of the mold. That causes a lot less blending. That green mixture also morphs somewhat at high pH, so it's looking kind of uh, muddy green at the moment. It'll turn much brighter as the soap hardens and the pH comes down. So this is the third round. point I kind of eyeball the containers to see if I'm using significantly more of one or the other and then try to adjust on the next pour using either more or less to bring them back more or less even. So for the fourth pour I'm going to use about half of what's left. As expected for this recipe, this uh, batter is staying really liquid. I would not say it's even slightly a trace yet. That's the yellow. For the fifth round, I'm going to use all but maybe a tablespoon or two.
had more blue there than some of the others. I think I've also got more purple than some of the others at this point. Now I would say the soap has reached light trace. It's a good time for that to be happening. Now I'm going to use all but the tiniest amount of most of these. Some of those, some of them I'll use all of it. save just enough white to finish out the corner here. So I'll take the spoon out and make this level. Now using a chopstick I'll do uh, radial swipes going from the pouring corner to the end, move over maybe an inch back to the corner and then repeat that. No need to worry about if you cross over a previous line, that won't hurt anything. Now using the, that, that was the thick end of the chopstick. Using the uh, thin end, I'm going to double up on some of these lines just to increase the complexity of the pattern out toward the ends. Some people say you should always wipe off the stick between swipes, but I tend not to. I'm probably living dangerously by doing that. Could drop some batter in where I don't want it. Down here in the pouring corner, I think I'll do a little bit of swirling. And then once the whole way around, and we'll call that complete. I probably will uh, put this in a 170 degree oven for a while to uh, see pop it, to, to uh, cold process, oven process it. Uh, it does have some bubbles in it, so I'll bang it a little, try to get those out. I'll also spray the surface with, uh, you maybe didn't hear that, I'll spray the surface with some alcohol. That will also break bubbles and tend to help prevent um, the formation of soda ash on the surface. So we'll have a look at this tomorrow and be ready to cut and take it out of the mold. Here's the finished soap a day later. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. It does not have any soda ash, so the alcohol helped with that. It does have some uh, little pock holes where bubbles are broken. Those will have to be planed away, but you can see that the yellow and the green have morphed back to their original desirable colors. And I'm thinking it looks pretty good, so I'll uh, cut it here and show the cut bars. The soap is finished and cut. <clears throat> These are the uh, top sides. 
This one on the bottom left it was in the pouring corner, and then this was the far corner from that. That shows some where bubbles have broken. I'll need to shave that off. And then these were, <coughs> excuse me, more in the middle of the um, slab. So some nice striping. These are cut sides. So the vertical sides of the bars where the, where the cutting knife went through. And then these are ends. And then here was the bottom as it was poured, um, bottom where it lay on the mold floor, but then I shaved off maybe a millimeter or two from these two. So you don't have to remove very much to get some nice color on the bottom as well. So there's a typical top side.